the M18 Hellcat. It's America's most recognizable tank destroyer and was the fastest armored vehicle of World War II with impressive kill ratios. 2,507 of these tank destroyers were built during World War II, of which dozens survive today. After the war, M18s were sold throughout the world, with modernizations taking place all the way up to the 1990s. In the movies, there are only a few films that showcase the M18, but they are worth highlighting. So as always, let's discuss this armored vehicle and showcase the few productions it turns up in. The defining features of the Hellcat are its speed, armament, and thin armor. The top speed of the Hellcat was an incredible 55 miles per hour, or 89 kilometers an hour. This was obtained several ways. One by having the same engine as used in many Shermans, which weighed up to 18 tons more than an M18. The Wright R975 was a radial aircraft engine, producing up to 400 horsepower. And for the M18, it was paired with an advanced 900T, Torquematic automatic transmission. Where are you, Fritzy? Coming to get you. The M18's light weight of 20 tons, of course, meant that it had thin armor. The majority of the armor was only 12.7 millimeters or half an inch thick, but up to twice that for the front of the turret. The armor was effectively sloped in most places, but really was only designed to protect against small arms fire being susceptible to virtually all calibers of German anti-tank guns. Then there's the open-top turret design, which exposed the crew to weapons fire, explosive shells, or from grenades, as shown here in Seven Man Army from 1976. The open top did, however, give the crew the advantage of excellent visibility, crucial for using the M18 for one of its main design purposes, ambush, with its excellent 76mm gun. The M18 carried the same 76mm gun as the Easy 8 Sherman, most famously seen in the film Fury. The M18's turret could fully rotate 360 degrees in 24 seconds, and a crew could get off 20 rounds per minute. The gun was capable of knocking out heavy German tanks, but for tanks such as the Panther, with its sloped frontal armor, the M18 had to be within close range, and ideally using high-velocity armor-piercing rounds, which were not available to every tank crew. The M18 was further armed with a 50 caliber Browning machine gun on a flexible ring mount operated by the commander. Success with the M18 came down to crew skill and terrain conducive to hit and run or ambush tactics. Given the thin armor, there was no room for error for an M18 crew. This was a tank destroyer that was not popular in introduction, especially for tank destroyer crews who had to give up their M10s for M18s. M10s were slower, but had armor twice as thick. The M10 tank destroyer guaranteed, and I do mean guaranteed, to blast the last swastika off any tank she meets. Ultimately, statistics helped back the design success of the M18. Kills claimed were 526 in total, 498 in Europe, 17 in Italy, and 11 in the Pacific. The overall kill-to-loss ratio was 2.4 to 1, though it could be argued the M18 was not fully tested in its tank-destroyer role. M18s were often used in improvised roles, such as direct and indirect fire support for infantry, for which it was capable, though it lacked a good explosive shell for its main gun. America didn't fully refine or depend on tank destroyer tactics like the Germans did in World War II. Sims, you looking forward to going home? You know what I'm looking forward to? Nice clean pair of pajamas. It's gonna be nice not to have to sleep in this anymore. That does sound good. There are three productions that heavily feature authentic M18s, 
Guns of War from former Yugoslavia, tells the often overlooked story of the rise and fall of the Republic of Užice, a short-lived territory liberated by Yugoslav partisans from German occupation for several months in 1941. The partisan movement was bloody, but significant. It tied up German resources that might have otherwise aided in the invasion of the Soviet Union the same year. Yugoslavia acquired 250 Hellcats after World War II. Several are used as mocked-up German armor for the film. Ironically, one initial complaint from tank destroyer crews was that the M18 did resemble German armor. Seven Man Army is a 1976 Hong Kong production filmed in Taiwan. It's based on the 1933 engagement known as the Defense of the Great Wall between Chinese and Japanese forces. The battle ended in negotiation and the creation of a demilitarized zone which weakened China's ability to defend itself in the coming Second Sino-Japanese War, which officially commenced in 1937. The Republic of China and Taiwan was supplied with 214 M-18s during the Korean War by the U.S. They make for a comedic representation of the light Japanese tanks and tankettes that would have been used during this time. The movie is worth a watch, particularly if you fancy a mix of the war and kung fu genres. Saints and Soldiers, The Void, is the modern American film of the three, using authentic M-18s for filming. The movie centers around the M-18, operating in the Harz Mountains, nicknamed The Void. Fighting the remnants of the German army, the M-18s engage in a cat-and-mouse battle with Panzer III's for which an excellent mock-up is used. The Panzer III makes for a good matchup, as both tanks are a capable threat to each other, the M18 with a larger gun, but weaker armor. The film is a humble low-budget production, but entirely focused on the experience of a tank destroyer crew and their engagement with the Panzer III's. Max, why don't you come up here and practice your German? You have all mine here. <clears throat> Saints and Soldiers The Void is a must-watch for any armor enthusiast. Just remember it's a low-budget production. Danny, open the escape hatch. Why are you down there? What happened to the Hellcat? Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this quick brief on the M18 Hellcat and some of the few movies you can find it in. I hope to see you in the next video.